What's up everybody, Ben here with Fly Plugins. And in this video, I'm going to explain how to set up your Stripe payment gateway. And I will walk you through testing transactions with Stripe so that you can begin selling courses with Stripe. This is gonna be an easy tutorial and it's all coming right up. If you've never used Stripe, you are in for a treat. Stripe is super easy to set up and test, unlike PayPal, but I'm not complaining or anything. Before I begin talking about setting up Stripe, I'm going to assume that you have already watched video one in this three-part series on setting up the shopping cart. If you haven't seen it, please click over to that video first as I will be making references to things set up in that video. I'm also going to assume that you have set up a Stripe account. If you don't have a Stripe account, then you will need one to complete the steps in this video. It's free to create a Stripe account and it's super easy to set up. The great thing about Stripe is that test mode can be enabled and disabled with the flip of a switch, unlike PayPal, which requires a developer account and a sandbox account and another sandbox account. Oh yeah, again, I'm not complaining. Lastly, I'm going to demo the payment gateway in action with Stripe test mode on my local development environment. However, I won't be covering how to set up my local development environment because that would likely be enough content to be recorded in another video. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into the demo. Okay, so I'm logged into WordPress and I am under the WP Courseware settings page. Uh, on the checkout tab on the payment gateways submenu. And this is where our payment gateways are listed. In the last video, we covered how to set up PayPal. Uh, so today we are going to just focus primarily on Stripe. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Stripe. Uh, what I wanna do here first is go down to test mode. We wanna enable test mode, okay? So that way we can run some test transactions. And next what we wanna do is we wanna get our key set here, test publishable key and test secret key. So in order to do that, we need to hop over to Stripe and I'm going to log in here to the dashboard. Okay. Now we are going to uh, put Stripe into test mode and this is super easy. In fact, it's so easy. If you blink, you might miss it. Are you ready for this? Okay. Keep an eye on the mouse. We are now in test mode. So easy. Okay. Now, if we click over to the developer's menu item here on the left-hand side, uh, you'll notice we have API keys just under that. And so what we want it to do is copy our publishable key over to our settings area. And we're gonna go ahead and reveal test key here. And I'm gonna copy that right over here. Uh, when you click this button, it might prompt you for a password, uh, depending on if you've logged in recently or not. Uh, if it does, you just simply need to put in your password uh, for Stripe. Okay, so now we've got both of our token uh, keys here. And so now what we need to do is we just need to set up a webhook. So we are literally almost done setting up Stripe. Okay, so we're going to copy the uh, webhook URL here and we are going to go back to Stripe and click webhooks here on the left-hand side. And you'll notice I already have a webhook set up in here, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one. You would be adding in a new one. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna update what I currently have. So I'm gonna take out that one, update the webhook, and I'm done. That's it. We are all set. We are ready to, to test Stripe. Um, so let's go back over to our settings area here. Um, and then we're going to go back up to the top here and we're just going to enable, enable Stripe. Um, I'm going to make reference to this here shortly on the front end, uh, the title and description. So that way I can show you where that actually shows up on the checkout page. Okay. And if we scroll down here just a little bit, you're going to notice this area here, Stripe checkout. Okay, so this next section here, Stripe Checkout, 
Uh, this is an option that you can enable. And basically what Stripe Checkout is, is it's actually a pop-up form. So rather than having an on-page form to fill out for credit card information, et cetera, you would actually have a pop-up. So it's almost even like a light box pop-up. It's a very simple form. Uh, so if you enable this, you can actually add in a checkout image. Um, so, so you can add maybe like your logo and then you get to add a checkout description. So this is optional um, and we're just gonna go ahead and leave this off for now. Okay, and lastly here we have inline credit card form. So the inline credit card form is basically a single text box where you would enter your credit card number, expiration date, and CVC code opposed to disabling this option, which would give you three separate text boxes for your credit card number, separate box for your expiration date, and a separate box for your CVC code. Okay, and lastly here, uh, the uh, statement descriptor. This actually is optional. You can enter, you know, uh, enter some text here, and basically th what this does is it actually shows up on the credit card statement for the customer. So you can, you can actually enter some text here uh, just like the little info bubble here says, you can uh, place up to 22 characters. I believe what will happen, um, they will get capitalized. All, every character will be capitalized on the on the credit card statement. And lastly, here we have enable logging. And so, if we go over to tools, I'm going to open this in a separate window, and we navigate to the system log tab. Uh, you'll notice there's going to be a, a log here. And so if that's enabled, when you perform transactions, uh, then you're gonna have some data that comes back in from Stripe and it will populate here. This is more for troubleshooting issues. Okay, so we are ready to perform some transactions now. But one last thing I wanted to quickly point out, um, we are using test mode. Uh, so test mode does not require that you use uh, an SSL or that you have an SSL certificate on your website. However, if you decide to use Stripe Live, uh, you will need an SSL certificate. You can contact your host. Your hosting company can probably help you get uh, a, an SSL certificate. Uh, any more SSL certificates are free. Let's Encrypt provides a, a, a free service for uh, SSL certificates, but check with your hosting company um, because likely they, they can help you out with that and set it up for you so that data transfer on your site will be encrypted with the SSL certificate. So again, for the test mode, we don't need it. So if you notice, there is a, a force SSL option up here. If we click that or if we go to, uh, to the checkout process tab here, uh, you'll notice that we have uh, this force SSL option here. Uh, you can use this typically when you set up an SSL on your website. Uh, SSL is forced across your website, but in some cases it's not. Uh, if it if it's not, then go ahead and tick this box. But again, you have to have an SSL for this to work. This ticking this box and not having an SSL, uh, it, it's still not going to work. This is just in case the SSL is not forced upon your entire site. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate over to my courses page. This is a page that we set up back in the shopping cart video. And so we have basically two courses and they are listed here on the courses page. They each have buy now buttons. And so what we can do is we can just go ahead and add to the cart and we can, we can actually check out. However, the cool thing about Stripe, and I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this, is that you can add a one-time payment course as well as a subscription-based course to the same shopping cart and check out with Stripe. That is not possible with PayPal. Okay, so let's go ahead and add both of these to the shopping cart. And you'll notice we have a one-time payment for test course one and we have a $5 monthly payment for, for how to build or how to restore a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> I, I like Volkswagen Beetles, by the way. Okay, and so, uh, if we just go ahead and navigate down, you'll notice that our form is pre-filled. That's because I've already run some tests and my data is already stored uh, for later for other purchases. Okay, so now you're gonna notice we've got two options here. We have PayPal because it is enabled and we also have Stripe. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I wanna show you, I'm gonna go back over to our settings for Stripe 
and make reference to the title and the description. So you see title here, credit card Stripe, and then pay with your credit card via Stripe as the description. That shows up right here. So credit card Stripe is your title and pay with credit card via Stripe. This is your description here, okay? It also just mentions here that test mode is enabled and it even provides you with a credit card number that you can use. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that to our clipboard and I'm actually gonna paste it right in. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out, notice this credit card form here. This is the inline form. Okay, so if you remember, we enabled the inline credit card form. Again, this is where you can put in your, your date and your CVC uh, code. And just a heads up, the, the date and the CVC code can be anything. As long as the date is in the future uh, and the CVC code can be anything. So just go ahead and feel free to type in anything. And lastly here, you're going to notice that we have our terms and conditions as well as our privacy policy. Again, these are items that I made reference to in the shopping cart video. Um, and so we have to actually check both of these boxes. If we don't check them and we attempt to purchase, it, it errors out. And we have to come back down and enter our info again. Okay. So go ahead and check those and let's go ahead and place our order. And the cool thing about Stripe too is it's it's very fast. So it responds very quickly. The checkout is 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 much faster than what happens with PayPal. So now we've completely completed our transaction successfully. Now we can navigate to our account page or the dashboard. Uh, you'll notice we got enrolled into two courses. Under orders, we have a single order here. And we also have a subscription because we purchased a one-time uh, payment type course and we also ordered a subscription-based course. And if we look, we have our subscription information here. We also have an option here to cancel our subscription. Now I'm gonna take you back over to the admin side again. And what I wanna do is I want to take you over to our orders page and let's go ahead and click into an order. Okay, so now in this orders page, we have, uh, <clears throat> we have some options in here. We can go down and view the subscription, um, and we also have uh, related orders. So one, one order is related to the one-time payment, the other order is related to the subscription. Okay, so if we actually pop into our subscription, you'll notice we've got a few options here as well we've got the option to cancel the subscription. So canceling the subscription places the, the subscription into a pending expiration. It's kind of in this holding pattern until the actual expiration date hits for that subscription. So in other words, your student would still have access to the course until the expiration date uh, occurs, and then they would be de-enrolled from the course. Okay, so... Um, before I do that, I just want to point out something else here. If we go down here to the payment, uh, you'll notice that we can actually refund the payment. Okay, so if we refund the payment, it will cancel the subscription, but it will also immediately de-enroll the user from the course, okay? So it doesn't wait for the subscription to end because obviously you're giving them a refund. You're giving them their money back. So at that point, you're severing uh, their access to the course. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go back one screen and I want to cancel the subscription first. So let's go ahead and cancel that. Okay, so the subscription's been canceled, okay? And if you notice, it goes into this pending cancellation mode, okay? So it's, it's pending uh, that expiration date, okay? And if I go over to our students area, you'll notice I still have access to both courses, including the subscription-based course. Okay, but if we go back and we refund the payment, then it actually immediately expires the course, which means that our student doesn't is no longer enrolled. They get de-enrolled from that course, okay? So now we just have the one-time payment course uh, available here. And if we go back to our order screen, we can view 
or we can come in here and we can actually refund this one as well. So if I go ahead and refund this, we should be de-enrolled from that course as well. And we are. And that's pretty much it as far as Stripe is concerned. Stripe is so much easier. I love working with Stripe. I can't say enough good things about Stripe. However, I do feel that there is a place for PayPal. As much as I do complain about PayPal, there is a large population of users in the world that still use PayPal. I think it's necessary. Again, that's my opinion. Um, and so anyhow, that, con that concludes the, the demonstration portion of, of Stripe. And that wraps it up. Stripe is super easy to set up and test, and I highly recommend using this payment gateway. Question of the day, do you prefer Stripe over PayPal or vice versa, or would you use both to give your customers various payment options? Post your answer in the comments below. Also, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And as always, Thank you for watching this video series on setting up your shopping cart and payment gateways for WP Courseware. We'll see you in the next video.